Here we go. We're here. How you guys doing? I'm trying to get my phone to work. How's everyone doing today? Welcome to the show, Traveling with Bruce. Here we are. <laughs> ah, hi there, everybody. Traveling with Bruce is on the air Monday, June the 25th, 2018. My goodness, what a day. Uh, I, had a, I had a topic all picked out that had nothing to do with what the topic is now. And um, I happened to be watching uh, television this morning, just kind of watching the you know, news headlines. And then I caught... Uh, CNBC, the folks at the stock market there, and uh, talking about the uh, ooh, cruise line stocks are plunging today. Oh, my goodness. I caught my attention. Uh, immediately uh, zoomed in on that and uh, saw the story about what's going on with the shares of the cruise lines all of a sudden. And uh, I just happened to receive a, a, a comment on my channel just around the same time from uh, Richard C., who's – I'm not sure if he's here today. He might be here already. Um uh, yeah, he's here. And uh, Richard C. said, Bruce, you were right. You, talk, you were talking about the earnings on the cruise lines. And uh, sure enough, Carnival just reinstated their earnings. They just dropped their estimates. And oh, my goodness, we had some some stuff happen today. So anyway, lots to talk about with that and the, the ramifications. Uh, this is only the beginning of what could be a mess uh, across the board for the markets, not just the cruise lines. Uh, this is uh, this is a uh, this is a kerfuffle uh, that could get uh, pretty hairy. We'll have to see how this plays out. Um, what was I going to say? Also, uh, yeah, I'm just looking at. I'm just looking over here at how the Dow did today. The Dow Jones Industrial. Say so they ended up down 328 points. Uh, they were down over 400 at one point today, and uh, it could get a lot worse. Uh, this is only the beginning. Uh, uh, we'll see how this all plays out. Anyway, uh, welcome to the show, uh, Traveling with Bruce. Uh, this channel is for, generally speaking, for cruisers who so love to go cruising. Uh, we love talking about cruise ship holidays and vacations and everything else, but we also talk about industry news, industry trends. We talk about what's going on out there. Um, and uh, today is a story that uh, we'll touch on the stock side, and, and I'll kind of go into how this can affect everything else. My channel uh, continues to kind of plug along. Um, I had uh, 2,385 uh, subscribers as of um, as of Saturday afternoon, the last time I talked to you. And right now, here, if I happen to look for my glasses, what do I got here? 20, 2,293. Let me write that down here. 20, 2,293 subscribers from 2,285 subscribers. So uh, we're uh, we're up about eight more, just a few more, just kind of, you know, Slow summer days, uh, but they're coming in. They still keep coming in. So welcome new uh, subscribers to the show, to the channel. Uh, I hope folks, uh, new folks are watching today. If you are, you've never been here before, uh, sign in. Say hi to me. Uh, tell me, where, where are you watching me from? What's your high temperature today? Uh, the gang here who, who are signing in, as usual, will say hi to you, and uh, we'll keep up on things. Let's see who's here and say hi, and uh, go from there. Uh, here we got Peter Heckema who signed in today. At uh, at uh, four oh four, uh, almost an hour before showtime, saying hi, Bruce and everyone. He's back in Tarpon Springs, Florida, from a week's vacation up north, where it was sixty seven degrees in the daytime uh, and forty seven at night. Glad to be back in the warm, where it's ninety two today. <laughs> Fantastic! And Jordan, morning, Bruce, uh, and all. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, twenty one Celsius in Brisbane, Australia, right now. Cooler days ahead. It, it, it's turning into winter there. And so she's she's now experiencing the low 70s for her highs. Uh, I know that in the summertime, it's substantially higher than that. So it is cooling off in Brisbane. And welcome back to the show. I'm glad you're here. Uh, 21 Celsius, uh, she's saying, hey, Peter. Peter, hi, Anne. Your weather uh, is good for, for this time of year. And she's saying it's cold. <laughs> Jim Thomas, uh, 95 for a high today, better than the 105 we had for the last few days. Uh, and of course, with the heat and the wind blowing, sometimes uh, decides we we needed four or five fires in the mix. So some forest fires and all, oh, who knows what's going on? Craziness. Um, and saying hi to Jim there. Jim Thomas saying, "Okay, uh, Debbie Manuel had me watch the video. Um, swear it was like a train wreck. <laughs> didn't want didn't want to watch, but you have to watch. Some things uh, can't uh, can't uh, be unseen. Uh, the video he's talking about is the video that was posted on the Facebook group page group page for Traveling with Bruce. The Traveling with Bruce group page on Facebook. Try to say that real fast. 
aware of the steamer. Uh, the steam and bean posted a little video there of a couple of guys uh, doing a dance, uh, wearing shorts and construction boots. If you haven't seen it, you got to check it out. Become a member of this site. Uh, get over there to Facebook and become a member of my uh, Traveling with Bruce homepage there. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. Anyway, that video has been creating quite a stir all weekend long. <laughs> a whole bunch of comments have been coming in. And, uh, well, I took the opportunity to write a little ditty uh, myself, and I posted it on Facebook. And you're welcome to head on over there and read it for yourself. Uh, the four of uh, the four biscuit boys, uh, a little little homage to the four biscuit boys, and uh, oh, we're having all kinds of fun here. Um, and Jordan, oh my God, the video, Jim. Hope you hope you're okay, Jim. Jim is saying years of electric shock therapy and alcohol will help eventually. <laughs> Richard C. Cruise Lines are starting to hurt based on their outlook for the rest of the year. Cruise uh, Caribbean down over 10% at one point today and bleak long-range financial outlook. Absolutely. I'll get into that in just a minute. There's problems in the, in the ship land. Debbie Manuel, hi, Peter, and Jim. Hi, Bruce. We'll only be 93 here in Northern California today. I believe Chico is where she's from. Hi, Debbie. Strange that 90s are looking great after the 105 we had this weekend. Just yuck. Oh, yuck. Tracy Dunlap, hi, Bruce and all. Uh, was nice and, and sunny earlier, but now raining in Naples, 89 degrees and humid right now. Debbie, uh, hi, Richard. Hope uh, uh, hope means great sales for us cruisers. Not so much for the investors. Yeah, the investors are going to take a beating here, maybe. Um, we shall see. Uh, MG Toe is here. Bruce, uh, Carnival plunged as well. Shorters at work and the industry is overbuilt. Most of the people who have cruised have already cruised. MG Toe goes on to say, uh, and most of all, people are tired of being overcharged. Rob, nickel and dime. There you go. Hey, back time. Tracy Dunlop, markers down. Good time to pick up cruise line stock to get our incentives on the cruises. Not good for our investments. Robert Brent is here. Hurricane season is predicted to be bad. Oh, man, Robert, that could be more trouble. Heather Young, hi, everyone. 75 in Kentucky. Been watching your videos all weekend, she says. Thumbs up. So Wendy Thompson adds on Bruce. Uh, he's, he's monetized. 85 here in Bland, Missouri. Hello, everyone. The yard is mowed. Uh, packing, ah, oh, but the reward is at the end. That's right, Wendy is heading to Florida, the Ocala area. She's got a house there. She's moving to Florida. Desi Wagner, good afternoon all. Uh, 73 and partly sunny here in Chicago land. I hope everyone had a great weekend. We had a lot of fun, uh, Desi and Jordan. Hey, Heather. Uh, everyone's saying hi. Vicky is here. Hey, hey, traveling with Bruce. Hi, all hope as well. Wendy Thompson, stocks down, sad, but cruise costs could be down uh, to draw more on the boat. You never know. Uh, cool jazz. Happy Monday, Bruce. Watching Mariner sail away from Miami as I How about that? Uh, Seakeeper. Uh, uh, hi, Bruce. And all sunny, muggy. 93 degrees here in southern Florida. Thumbs up. Thank you, sir. Uh, everyone is saying hello. Robert Brandt, 85 in St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, not bad. Not bad there. Scott Weber. Hi, Bruce. It's 71 and sunny today here in Palos Verdes, California. Scott, welcome back. Uh, nice to have you here again. Angela, hello, Bruce. In the 90s in Tampa Bay. Welcome, Angela. Wendy. Oh, Robert in St. Thomas. Love it there. Love it. Uh, Scott Batchy. Hi, Bruce and everyone. Another beautiful day in Ventura. 68 degrees and sunny. You've got to love that. Maurice is here. Uh, hi, Bruce. I'm back from my MSC Seaside Cruise, and it was great. There was no smell. Uh, the food was great. The entertainment was great, but the room had a little storage, and it was tiny for four people. Ah, there we go. I have a story about four people in a room, but that's another another matter entirely. Uh, uh, Heather Young, hi, Scott. Welcome. Uh, Maurice, the ship was so beautiful and elegant. I didn't want to leave. This is good stuff. I'm really glad to hear this. Uh, Maurice, I'm telling you, I've been waiting for some good news from anyone from Seaside. I've been getting a couple of good reports. This is a wonderful piece of news for you giving me here. I'd love to hear this. Iskew Park. Hi, Bruce. It's Iskew and Thunder Bay, Ontario. It's 16 degrees Celsius here and sunny. Hello, my fellow suburbs. Uh, welcome back, Iskew. And 16 is coming around. You, you know, another couple more degrees. You can finally hit 70 degrees. Finally, Scott Batchy saw the vid. It was uh, it was hysterical. <laughs> that was the one on Facebook. That's right, Debbie Manuel. Sorry, boys, but Bruce's poem was epic. There you go. Uh, Richard C. Darn, I had a buy order filled this morning for CCL at 61. Yes, uh, CCL. Uh, uh, yeah, that didn't close at 61 today. Uh, no, sir. Uh, darn it. Uh, hello, Ann and all from Richard C. Robert Brandt, uh, uh, love it most of the time. Uh, Tom Henry, uh, this is in, uh, this is in, uh, St. Thomas. He loves it most of the time. Tom Henry. Hi, everyone. This is the real Tom. 82 Fahrenheit <laughs> in Richmond. Cloudy. Hi, buddy. Welcome back. The real Tom Henry. What is the NCL stock price today? Uh, NCL, uh, started at $50.95. Uh, hit a low of 47.33. 
closed at 48.77 down $3.19 or 6.14%. It was down over 10% at one point today. Not good. Uh, I think more hurt is in the future here. Uh, I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Peter Heckema, the cruise ship stocks down because the analysts just discovered the cruise line companies have overcapacity, also too many ships coming online. That and more. Uh, Vicky Maurice, tell all uh, tell all going on in September. So uh, Vicky wants to hear more about the seaside. Richard C., uh, Norwegian, down $3.19 to $48.77. Peter Heckman might be a good time to buy cruise ship stocks. Steaming Bean, hey, 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 spent much of the day dis, uh, dismantling my classroom. Steamer, welcome to the show. Uh, I don't know if you've been over to uh, Facebook, uh, traveling with Bruce Page. Uh, stuff going on over there. Uh, there's a video there, uh, all kinds of stuff happening. Uh, you may want to check this out. And Jordan uh, saying, uh, uh, hey, Cool Jazz, Tom, uh, Scott, Robert, Steeman, she's saying hi to everybody. Robert, Brent, don't forget fuel costs affect the profits of the cruise lines. Uh, uh, that's right. So, Richard, see, it looks like the China segment is not taking off as planned. A lot of new ships are going there. That's right. That's right. Ed Tolleson, Jr. Hey, Bruce, I am a new chatter. I am in Bronx, New York, and the weather is beautiful. Can you please do a show on cruise lines with a lower single supplement? I'm looking at a uh, 14-day cruise. Ah, Ed, welcome to the show. Welcome to the channel. Uh, we do talk about single supplements all the time. Steaming Bean, who's uh, who's typing right now behind you there, he is a single cruiser himself and uh, always looking for good deals. No question about it. Uh, uh, Steamer's thinking if the stocks are falling, it means we're going to have some good deals. Uh, the video of those guys dancing. <laughs> Steamer is saying, are you talking about the video of those guys dancing on the Facebook group page? I, I am, but then there's also the poem. Have you seen the poem yet? Uh, who needs Chippendales when you have Clydesdales? <laughs> cool, Jess, <chance>, L-O-N. <laughs> That's true. I mean, when you got Clydesdales that can dance like that, why would you need anyone for chip and milk? I mean, come on, let's talk about that. My gosh. Well, the story of the day are the cruise ship stocks. Uh, we've got uh, we've got issues. A steamer saying, "I love the poem." Thank you, steamer. Uh, that was fun. Um, Norwegian, like I said, down three dollars nineteen cents. Royal Caribbean stock uh, opened at one hundred nine thirty five, got down to one hundred four fifty seven. Closed at 105.39, down six dollars and sixteen cents a share, or 5.52 percentage points. And Carnival led the way on the downside. Sixty dollars fifty-one cents was the opening price today. Dropped to 56.95, closed out at 58.54, down four dollars ninety-nine cents a share, or 7.85 percent today. And um, uh, Morgan Stanley was talking about these shares uh, two weeks ago. I did a show 20 days ago on the 5th of, Ju oh, 5th of June, approximately 20 days ago, uh, warning about the profit warnings from Morgan Stanley. And at the time, the shares kind of wavered a little, but they didn't do that much. And everybody forgot it because the markets were doing well as a whole. But uh, the administration has uh, launched an out now trade war. They don't call it a trade war, but it, it, it's a trade war. Uh, first, you made uh, first you made Europe mad, and you made Canada mad, and now you're making China mad. And guess what? Everyone's turning against the U.S. and retaliating with their own trade tariffs because what's goose for the what's good for the goose is good for the gander up here. That's our expression. Uh, you give, you get, and uh, all of a sudden, our friends at Harley Davidson came out with a shocking announcement today. This is the motorbike company that went to the White House, visited the president with the hogs, all the bikes. And we're talking about all the great jobs they're going to create in America because of the great tax plan that uh, the Trump team was putting together. Little did these guys at Harley have any inkling whatsoever that uh, the other side of this little deal is that uh, the administration has decided to put quotas and, steel and, and surpluses, uh, uh, tariffs on steel and aluminum. Uh, outside countries don't take kindly to that, especially when uh, allies get called the security risks. They don't particularly like that. And the next thing you know, all Harley motorcycles going to Europe are slapped with a huge tariff, adding up to $2,200, $2,300 to the cost of a single motorcycle. There have always been huge tariffs on motorbikes like that in Asia, especially China. Just unbelievable tariffs. Uh, but these tariffs in Europe are so bad and they're so restrictive, so onerous, that Harley has already figured out what they've got to do. They have to literally uh, build out an assembly plant for Harley Davidson motorcycles in Europe. They have to make them there. They might make the parts in the United States, but they're gonna be final assembled over there at the very least. And it may well be that motorbikes are designed by American designers, but are gonna be built by foreigners in foreign factories, not in American factories. And that way the 
motorbikes will escape these unbelievable tariffs that have been slapped on the motorbikes. And uh, a whole bunch of jobs are going to disappear in the United States because they're not going to be assembling motorbikes for export to Europe. They're only going to be assembling motorcycles for delivery in the United States to the U.S. market. And if the U.S. market goes into any kind of a recession because we have a trade war going on between all these major trading partners, you're going to have an economic slowdown here because what are tariffs? They're called taxes. <laughs> tariffs are taxes. And uh, Trump just slapped the 20% tax on all the steel and aluminum. Uh, by First, he hands the tax cut to the, uh, to the American taxpayer and the American corporations, and now he's slapping taxes on these foreigners. The foreigners are turning right around and slapping taxes on Americans. And it's the American consumer that will pay dearly. Forget your tax cuts. You're going to pay more in tariffs than you ever are going to get from the American government from a tax refund. American corporations will still be the biggest winners of all, generally speaking, except for those who are going to be caught in the middle, like Harley-Davidson. Now the cruise lines over here. Uh, what's going to happen to the cruise lines? Well, the analyst said three weeks ago that the issue with the cruise lines were a combination of things. The combination was higher average fuel costs because fuel used to be in the $45 to $50 a barrel range for the last year and a half, two years. Now oil is in that $65, $70 barrel range. And the pressure seems to be higher rather than lower. The second thing is uh, higher interest rates. The higher the interest rates go, and the key rates we're talking about are the U.S. interest rates. I'm not talking about Germany's interest rates, which are virtually near zero. I'm not talking about uh, interest rates in Switzerland or anything like that. I'm talking about the USA Treasury notes. The USA 10-year Treasury is paying out around 2.8 to 3% interest right now. That's up from 2.2% and up, up from 1.5% a couple of years back. The uh, U.S. Uh, uh, Treasury, the Fed, wants to keep raising interest rates to get them more back to normal, which is in that 4 to 5% range. And that means the cost of mortgages are going to go up another 1 or 2 percentage points in the next year or two. Car loans are going to go up 3 or 4%. Credit cards are not coming down. They're going to stay where they are. And large entities like cruise ships, cruise ship companies that want to build billion-dollar cruise ships, they borrow 80% of that money, easily 80% of that money. And if they have to pay 1% or 2% or 3% more for the money over the next 20 years, on an $800 million loan, uh, every 1% is $8 million a year in interest more. So $8, eight million times 20 years, $160 million more in interest. 3% interest rate bump, $480 million in interest charges that are going to be added to that cruise line for one ship for the next 20 years. The folks at Carnival and uh, Royal Caribbean and Norwegian and Celebrity, Holland America, Prince says, you name them, they all have multiple ships on order. They aren't just bringing in one. Our friends at uh, Royal Caribbean just brought in the Symphony of the Seas, $1.3 billion. They want to build another one, the fifth one in the Oasis class. That is going to run a billion-dollar loan. That's going to be a billion-dollar loan. If that's going to be two percentage points more, three percentage points more, $30 million a year in interest, 20-year loan, $600 million more in cost. Who pays that? You pay that. The, the passenger pays because the, co co the company has to get the money from someplace. Uh, who, who's going to build out these ships? To me, if interest rates are going to spike because there's going to be a recession and there's going to be a run on, the, on uh, the American dollar, there's going to be a run on interest rates perhaps, it's going to be bad news. Uh, uh, we're going to have to see how this plays out. Now, the only good news here, and it's not even really good news, as the economies are threatened and trade gets worse, the American dollar actually gets stronger. The American dollar getting stronger means that the U.S. Treasury interest rate goes down because uh, investors want to buy the U.S. Treasury as protection against economic uncertainty. They'll dump 10-year bonds from Spain or they'll dump the Italian 10-year bond or they'll dump the British 10-year bond. They'll buy the American 10-year bond. Third world countries all want to buy the American 10 year bond. So a bunch of American dollars are needed to buy those bonds, which means the American dollar goes up in value against all the other currencies. And the US interest rates uh, at, on the 10 year note drop because of demand for more of these bonds. The price of the bond goes up, but the, the interest that you get on that money is less. That's a temporary deal. The reality is that the higher the US dollar goes, the higher all US exports are in cost. 
and you add on top of that a Harley motorcycle plus the tariff on top of that, the Harley motorcycle is priced in US dollars. If it goes up 5% against another currency, that bike went up 5% in price just because of the currency. Now add the tariff on top of that, and now you could be looking at a 30 35% price increase on a Harley. That's why Harley wants to build factories or assemble their bikes overseas where they can escape the tariffs. You get enough American companies doing that kind of stuff, uh, Ford, GM, uh, everyone else. Uh, Ford announced last week, uh, was it Ford or GM announced last week, they're building their uh, SUV in Mexico. They're not stopping. There's despite, despite what the administration is talking about, bringing jobs back to America, these factories are booming overseas because it's cheaper to produce product for the U.S. market elsewhere than domestically. And with U.S. dollar rising, it's cheaper to hire foreign labor in foreign lands. It's even cheaper. The American dollar goes further in foreign countries. So this is compounding the problem. The answer, of course, is no tariffs. <laughs> Free trade is the answer. Free trade between countries is good for business and when it's good for business it's good for consumers because our friends in the shipping business they got a problem here in the uh, cruising business a high american dollar for a canadian like me that means the cruise just went up in price a one thousand dollar a week cruise with tips and port charges and uh, expenditures on board the ship maybe a two thousand dollar expense by the time it's said and done per person four grand four thousand dollar cruise goes up uh, by five percent because of currency problems that's a two hundred dollar increase you multiply that by maybe a family of four. Family of four was going to spend $10,000 on a cruise. Now they're going to spend $10,500 on a cruise. The flights are going up, American dollars. The hotels are going up, American dollars. Even the In-N-Out Burger, the McDonald's, they're all going up because of the American dollar. The, the foreigners, Canadians, Europeans, uh, South Americans, they're going to postpone trips. They're going to take fewer. And cruise ships, Pricing the shares of cruise ships twitch just on the slightest thinking of issues. Any kind of an issue will make a stock price of a cruise ship line move by 4 to 10% like that. And that's what happened today. So that's why Carnival was down over 10% at one point today when they announced a slight reduction in their annual estimates. They, they weren't talking about a catastrophic, oh, my God, we're, we're, we're falling apart kind of deal. They're talking about a uh, share price, uh, a share earnings from something like $4.65 a share was what they were thinking they were going to make per share profit this year. Now they're saying it might be four, four forty-five, twenty dollars 20 cents a share less. 20 cents a share from four sixty-five. dollars that's, that's less than 5% differential. The problem is, though, that the company had been alluding to the fact that their overall profits were going to go higher this year, not lower. So the difference is actually greater than thought. People were buying stock today at uh, prices of $60, $62 a share or higher. They were buying stock at higher prices today, thinking that the company would make more money this year and even more money next year. More ships, more cabins, larger ships, more efficient ships, passengers dying to get on the ships. They were thinking the company might make 5 or $6 a share in the next year or two. Per share. So if I buy the stock for 60 bucks a share and it's going to make six bucks a share starting in 2020, I'm only paying 10 times earnings. 10 times six bucks a share is 60 bucks. I'll pay 60 bucks. It's only 10 times. But if the company now is saying, well, we might only make 445 a share this year instead of 465, and people thought maybe it'd be closer to five dollars. And next year they were hoping it was going to be 550 to 575 a year for that six bucks. The company may not be making $6 a share in the next year or two. They might only be making $5 a share in the next year or two, which means you're paying 12 times earnings, future earnings for that stock right now. You're paying too much. So that stock's got to come off 10 bucks a share to get back to 10 times earnings. Because if the company's only going to make 5 bucks a share, the stock should be at 50, shouldn't be at 60. And that's why today it had a hiccup and went from 60.51 down to 56.95, closing at 58.34. It's going lower than that. If this number, if this persists, this is the opening salvo because what can happen from here will be a continual deterioration of the business cycle for these cruise lines. It it may well happen that uh, oil continues to march up a little higher and reach seventy to seventy five, eighty bucks a barrel. 
it could well happen that inflation rises a little bit more because we have had very low inflation lately and the cost of food the cost of services the cost of insurance the cost of port fees has been you know kept in check if inflation starts showing up all the costs for the cruise lines will go up like just for us the third factor is the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar continues to strengthen because of economic weakness everywhere else and a trade war that's becoming more and more ugly all the time. Cruise costs are going to rise much faster than any of us had thought on average. And this could catch the cruise lines in a bit of a pickle because the cruise line hasn't changed its price. If, if it's an $800 a week package plus tipping and, and, and port charges, $1,000 or $1,200 a person, but the cruise line finds that the cost, the actual cost to a cruiser is up by $100 because of currency problems. What are they going to do? They're going to drop their price by $100 to, to offset that? That's $100 off the profits, not off their costs. This is a nasty little issue that the cruise lines are going to be faced with. For those of us who are shoppers and we're in a position to pick and choose our cruises when they come, come to us at the right price, it could be a good thing because cruise lines uh have one rule that they adhere to and that is fill the ship fill the ship with people when it leaves the dock because once that ship leaves miami and it's only at 95 percent capacity it stays at 95 capacity for the rest of that cruise if you can leave that port with 105 percent capacity you keep it at 105 percent capacity you've got all those people to aim at for bingo casinos specialty dining, drinks, spa treatments, shore excursions, anything you can think of to get them to spend money on board the ship. So if the difference is having, say, on an Oasis-class ship, the Symphony of the Seas, if you can have 6,500 passengers on the ship versus 5,800 passengers on the ship, I'll take the 6,500. That's seven, Those 700 bodies, put them on. That's 700 more people drinking and eating and playing and having a good time hopefully spending money so cruise lines are worried and analysts are panicking uh they're quietly panicking going oh man these guys are overbuilt they built they got way too many ships now way too much capacity ships are half finished three quarters finished they're still coming on these the the edge the the uh, the uh, Celebrity Edge comes out in like three months. That's five, almost 5,000 more passengers right there. We just had Symphony of the Seas. We just got the Horizon. We just got the Bliss. These ships are now committed. They have to go in the water. They have to sail. They have to make money. They have to pay for themselves. And this is an issue for the stock analysts and the investors. So there you have it. There's a, a brief breakdown of what's going on here. It's a uh, big deal, and it is has it has global ramifications. The China story, by the way, is another entire mess. Mr. Trump has not has done nothing but make the Chinese mad. <laughs> just, that's not a good idea. You got 1.2 billion people over there. You got a president over there for life. Uh, you got a guy who doesn't have to worry about being reelected. He can make any policy he wants now because China doesn't have elections anymore. Surprise, they have a dictator. Uh, this guy, all of a sudden, is getting slapped around by Donald Trump and the media with the North Korea nonsense and the trade nonsense, the trade wars, you think China is going to uh, turn a blind eye to that? I don't think so. Uh, they've already imposed sanctions on 50 billion of American imports. They'll impose other sanctions, and then they'll start doing stuff like postponing the buy of 25 Boeing jets for five years. They'll just buy from Airbus. They'll cancel contracts and pay the penalty to walk. There's all kinds of stuff like that. And then the big one for the cruise lines, I keep pointing at my notes over here, <laughs> the cruise line notes. The big one is if China cuts off U.S.-based cruise ships from its waters, because it's just not happy with the trade wars, if Norwegian cannot get uh, cruise ships into Chinese waters to home port in Shanghai or Hong Kong or, or everywhere else, or even visit Shanghai or other Chinese ports, um, and the same thing happens to Carnival with all of its lines, uh, Cunard, p &O, Costa, uh, Princess, Holland America. Um, then you've got Norwegian and you've got Royal Caribbean and Celebrity. They, they all can't go there. They're all publicly traded companies on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, most of the shares are held by U.S. investors. Um, if China retaliates against these cruise lines, uh, oops, uh, there's, there's the whole Chinese market cut off for these uh, cruise ship operators. That's hundreds of ships that can't go and grab uh, Chinese tourists who are dying to go on cruises. 
will spend premium money to go on cruises. This leaves the market open for the secondary cruise lines that are not affiliated with the big three. This isn't good. Uh, these ships have to be placed somewhere, uh, but you can't you can't double capacity to Australia overnight. You'll flood the market. You can't uh, double capacity to uh, Caribbean. You haven't got the facilities to handle that many more ships. Where are they going to go? This is the issue, uh, and this is where the overcapacity factor could come into play a lot quicker than people had imagined or realized. Because if you get an arbitrary ruling from a country like China and maybe other countries who are upset at, a, at the United States, all of a sudden these cruise lines aren't welcome in certain countries all of a sudden, and they have nowhere else to go. Cruise lines used to have the ability to just go wherever the, uh, wherever the business is. Well, if it's no good in the U.S., we'll, we'll, we'll move them to Europe. If it's not good in Europe, we'll move them over to Asia. If it's not, we'll go to Australia. We'll find wherever the market is best, we'll move the ships because we have floating resorts. The resorts can be pushed anywhere. Yeah, as long as they're welcome. And uh, right now, uh, the U.S. flag is getting uh, beat up a little bit. And uh, this could make things a bit dicey. I, I, I don't know. I'm just telling you what I see, what I'm reading, what I'm noticing. And uh, I'm not against anything. I'm trying not. I'm desperately not trying to make this political, but it's all so hard not to. Uh, there's so many uh, issues here going on uh, all at the same time. Let's see what the comments have been while I've been ranting away here. Uh, <laughs> uh, and Jordan, gosh, being that video, uh, he loved the poem. By the way, uh, the poem was epic. As uh, Anna saying. Um, sea Keeper, I'm a solo cruiser too, by the way. Richard C., I got a Caribbean today at 60 50 a share. Um, cool Jazz uh, saying he's doing well. MG Toe, uh, best time to buy cruise lines is when the market crashes and these stocks are cut in half or more, which you never know. Robert Brandt brought CCL in 1993, so it's all up for me. Very good, Robert. Richard C., the next sector will be automobile. U.S. Uh, currently has 2.5% on cars and parts, while Canada, EU has a rate of 20 to 35% on U.S. cars and parts. Um, I can tell you, Richard, uh, almost every car made by Ford, GM, uh, uh, Chrysler, trucks, and all, uh, all have parts from Canada and Mexico. Uh, there is no U.S. made, U.S. only made item out there in the vehicle trade. It's all mixed up. And uh, if you want to get in the middle of that, if Trump wants to get in the middle of all that, uh, you can just add a $5,000 sticker price to your vehicles in the U.S. Uh, they'll be more expensive in Canada. They always have been um, uh, in Mexico. Uh, how many Mexicans buy uh, Ford pickup trucks? Uh, certainly not the average Mexican. Uh, so it's not the Mexican market that's going to be in trouble. It's the American market that's in trouble. It's going to boomerang right back to the U.S. consumer. Matthew, why is this recommended to? Why is this recommended to me? Laugh out loud. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Uh, MG Joe, remember when the market crashed and in, 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 uh, Caribbean was down to fifteen thirty nine a share? Richard C., MG, that would be a great price to buy 100 shares. Yeah, it would be a long term. Robert, uh, huge U.S. Uh, corp, pay no U.S. taxes. So guess who makes up the shortfall? The consumer, of course. Uh, MG Toe, cars are made all over the world with parts made all over the world. The car companies build cars where their market is located. MG Toe, Richard, I got uh, got in at the low 20s. He's saying, Robert Brandt, I bought Ford at 316 in 2008. Wow, what a bargain. But one of the few buyers. Um, Richard C., U.S. is the largest market for imported Mercedes. They are scared of the increase in tariffs. Yes, and how many Benzes are built in the United States? A ton are built in the United States. A bunch of Benzes are assembled in Mexico as well from parts made in the United States. And uh, you want to import, uh, uh, Trump wants to put duties on uh, these parts? A Benz is going to run you 10 grand more, 20 grand more in the United States, and it's got a bunch of U.S. labor built into it. All of a sudden, you're going to have layoffs in Carolinas. You're going to have car plants laying off thousands. Michigan, thousands. Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Indiana. Name the states where the car business is in the United States and start looking at 15% layoff for unemployment rates. Unbelievable what's just possibly around the corner. Uh, uh, the administration is playing with fire, and it's not good. Uh, Robert Grant sold for five times in 180 days. <laughs> well done, bro, Robert. MG Toe, I wonder if Caribbean uh, Carnival will give us another 75 cent dividend again as they did last time. I don't think so. Uh, they're going to hold on to their money. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Wendy, oh, that would be nice to bring on a dividend. Don't count on it. Uh, Richard, uh, uh, Robert Grant, Arley used to scream they were American-made. Yeah, uh, cash is king, Robert is saying, too. Wendy Thompson, uh, 
uh, GM is closing the plant in uh, St. Louis area. There you go. Steaming bean. Thank goodness I picked up my Ford pickup truck when I did. <laughs> Richard C., uh, either all tariffs from all countries should be zero or, or do what the president is doing. U.S. should not be dumping ground for the EU. Uh, well, you know, uh, the United States does actually doesn't do too bad when it comes to trade, actually. Uh, the thing that Americans don't realize, too, is the strength of the American dollar. Forget about lately. I mean all the time. Uh, the American dollar is always the number one premium price currency of the world. That's why Americans have such a high standard of living. But if uh, foreign investors stick, start to get the impression that uh, the United States is not going to lead the world industrially and in, uh, in, uh, in other areas, they'll start dumping American assets. Uh, if GM stock is, is not to be held or, or Carnival stock, Norwegian stock, uh, Ford, uh, Apple, uh, you name the company, They'll drop those to U.S. assets and they'll buy stocks and other companies and other assets and other currencies. You get a whole bunch of U.S. currency coming back to America that no one else wants to buy. Down goes the value of the American currency against everybody else. And up goes the cost of living for every American. And down goes the standard of living for every American. Forget the tax cut saving your economy. You're going to be in a recession or a depression. It could be nasty. Canada will get sucked in with it because we're so dependent on the Americans. Mexico will get depressed. It'll be a worldwide depression, and it doesn't have to be that way. It just doesn't. Everybody wants to buy uh, quality goods at a decent price, get the tax man out of the deal, because uh, businessmen can solve problems. Politicians make problems. That's the issue. American labor unions have been a huge factor, Robert Brandt is saying, but they're much smaller than they used to be, Robert. They're not the same anymore. Apple doesn't have a union, and they're affected. Carnival doesn't have a union. They're affected. Uh, but, you know, there are still businesses with unions. Uh, but in Europe, you've got businesses with unions, and they're doing just fine. Go figure. Vicky, uh, and we still, uh, we're still broke. That's right. <laughs> MG Toe, free trade is not good for the U.S. When foreign governors give their corporations pork chop money to support their industry, thus undercutting true value. Well, like I say, uh, governments should be out of the business world. Unfortunately, they won't get out. Uh, that's where they get their taxes from. Robert, Carnival has almost no USA assets, so some things, uh, some things aren't too affected. Uh, Robert, I hear you there, uh, but it's perception, isn't it? If the perception is Carnival is going to make less money, the stock goes down. doesn't matter where the assets are or what the assets are. At the end of the day, the shares reflect the value of the corporation based on what people feel the company is going to be uh, doing, how, how well the company will do as, a, as an entity. Uh, look at General Motors stock. General Motors stock is half what it was not too long ago. Company is still profitable, still a big machine, still makes money. Stock's down by half. And it's perception because the momentum of the company, the perception is the momentum is down, weaker. And the Dow, the Dow Jones kicked GE off the industry in the index. So GE isn't even in the Dow 30 anymore. That's how bad it's gotten at GE. Unbelievable. Robert C., uh, Robert, not really anymore, but tax incentives given by U.S. government to allow U.S. companies to relocate overseas. It comes to the bottom line, earnings, not job security. It's all about the money. How much money can you make? Uh, wasn't it uh, a month ago uh, I mentioned on my show, Carnival announced a $1 billion stock buyback. Carnival is making so much money, they're going to buy back a $1 billion worth of their stock. Or was that? It was Norwegian. Excuse me. It was Norwegian Cruise Lines. Instead of giving a cash refund to the folks on the sun, they decided uh, it would be a good idea to have a billion-dollar stock buyback. They might suspend that right now. It might not be such a good idea to buy back the stock. It might be a good idea to hang on to the billion bucks and maybe pay down some debt uh, or take on less. We'll have to see. Uh, things are changing fast. Um, let's see here. Uh, Dylan, hey, Bruce, nice, warm, 108. Welcome, Dylan Maru. Welcome back. Robert, the labor is cheaper in many ways, superior, sadly. Uh, Scott Weber, uh, what are currency futures doing? Uh, well, I'm not watching right now, but the U.S. dollar has been rising nicely. Robert, we have tax incentives in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and many funds uh, and management companies are hiring here. Uh, I'm sure you do. Uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, um, you know, it's, it's cheaper to do business there, uh, incentives and that type of thing. But these uh, these entities, these these funds, these uh, money funds, they got to put their money to work. And uh, you don't want to be owning stock that's going to go down in value, whether the stock is going down or whether the currency that the stock represents is going down. You've got to hedge that, and that's why these entities exist to protect people's money. Steaming Bean, when do the do the cruise deals start? That's what he wants to know. Uh, Robert Branch, Travel with Bruce, that's exactly right. Richard C., China requires that cruisers in China buy vacations from ch Chinese travel agents and not directly from the cruise line, which controls the price, and the foreign companies can't get a fair uh, price uh, to the Chinese. The, the issue here, of course, Richard, is that uh, <coughs> You have Chinese people who want to go on cruises, 
No question. They have the money to pay. No question. Chinese government has decided they want to control that business. And they've decided that, okay, Carnival, uh, Norwegian, Royal Caribbean, anyone else, you want to come in here and operate a cruise line? We'll sell the tickets through licensed agents that we license. We, the Chinese government. Uh, well, guess what? Uh, not anyone in China can open up a, a travel agency and sell cruise tickets. No. You have to be a licensed travel agent to do that. To get a license in China as a licensed Chinese uh, cruise agent, you kind of have to know somebody, really. I mean, when it's all said and done, you kind of have to know people. And, uh, you know, people who are people uh, do the funniest things in the world, um, the craziest things in the world. Um, cruise lines, uh, in effect, have to negotiate with a, 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 a travel agency entity, one, for fares. And if the Chinese government decides to put a 20% tax uh, on cruises because they want to, cruise lines are powerless to stop it. And uh, the Chinese either buy or they don't. And if they don't, the cruise ship is half empty. What are you going to do? You're going to lose money if you hang around there. So cruise lines are in a world of uncertainty in China, an absolute world of uncertainty. If China has a problem with South Korea, or if China has an issue with Japan, or if China has an issue with the Philippines because these little islands are becoming militarized by the Chinese, Cruise lines that operate from Shanghai to Manila will not be allowed to operate from Shanghai. And cruise lines that start in Tokyo and visit Manila and want to come into China are not going to be allowed in. These itineraries are up in the air. All of a sudden, cruise lines don't know, one, whether they will be able to home port where they thought they were going to home port in China. Two, they don't know if they're allowed to even bring a ship into Chinese waters with tourists that home port somewhere else. Three, they don't even know if Chinese tourists will be allowed to go on cruise ships that they home port in and what the taxes will be. That's uncertainty. Analysts in Wall Street really hate that. They really don't like it. And they issue sell warnings or downgrades on stocks of cruise companies or airlines that operate in these areas as well or hotel operators. There are Marriott's and Hilton's and other brand name hotels in China right now that are from the United States. There's KFC in the United States. Starbucks is in the United it, it, I'm sorry, these are all in China. These are all US companies operating in China. That's what I'm trying to say. These entities operating in China right now may find themselves with some kind of a tariff tax. It might be some kind of a national sales tax on uh, foreign held corporations. Uh, so a cup of coffee at Starbucks is uh, the equivalent of a dollar more U.S. overnight. Nothing the United States can do about it. And all of a sudden, you've got how many thousands of Starbucks locations that are going to be under unbelievable economic pressure to succeed. KFCs, Burger Kings, Wendy's, McDonald's, cruise lines, airlines, hotel operators. Just do the math. Car companies, Buick. Buicks are popular in China unless there's a tariff imposed by the Chinese government on Buicks. Holy moly, we got us a trade war, and that's a problem. MG Toe, it's called rotation. Stocks of various industries get popular, and the brokers pump their current inventory. Eh, perhaps, but when there's a sellout, people sell, people sell. Prices go down. That's the end of that. MG Toe, it's called pump and dump. Yeah, well, good luck trying to sell a stock to an investor when they're going down in value. Not going to work. Robert Brent, most of the profits of the cruise industry come from onboard spending. Yes, Robert. And the, the trick of it, of course, is you got to get them on board. If you can't get them on board because the, the fare cost has gone up, or how about this? Uh, uh, um, people flying to, uh, to Miami on uh, British Airways find that it's $100 more expensive to fly the, uh, the airfare because of the uh, drop in the pound versus the price of the dollar. They're not going on the trip at all, which means they're not even going on the cruise ship. If the cruise ship can't get them on board, they can't spend on board. And this is the issue here. Scott Weber, maybe a currency futures for a hedge against currency fluctuations, perhaps. Robert Brandt and promote and spending. Uh, Wendy Thompson, hi, Dylan. St. Louis will be heating up again soon, weather-wise, absolutely. Steaming Bean, the cruise lines could always make special deals for Canadians like they did in the past. Yes, but it'll cost them. It, it'll just cost their bottom line. Yes, cruise lines can offer Canadians a deal on the currency exchange, uh, a special sale. But at the end of the day, uh, if you drop your net return by $100 a passenger to get them on the ship, 
uh, and then they buy a drink package and they buy this. They were going to buy the drink package anyway. They were going to have a specialty restaurant anyway. You're not going to get that 100 back. You're, you're guaranteed to get 100 less than you did a year ago or before the promotion. And that $100 is off the profits. It's not off the costs. That's the other issue because you got to put fuel in that cruise ship to move it. You got to pay your staff. You got to buy the provisions to feed everybody. You got to buy the drinks. Uh, you got to pay the port fees and the port charges and the insurance and everything else. If all that is going up in cost, your revenue revenues are coming down. There's a shortfall no matter how many people are on that ship. You're still not making as much as you used to. Robert Brandt, my inside track is I just sold my liquor business that supplied the ships in St. Thomas. And I know based on what they're ordering and what they were going to profit within a certain amount, you betcha, you got a, you got a good insight there. Richard C. Bruce, the Chinese stock market is off a lot more than the U.S. There are people put all their savings in the stock, so people are going to be uh, angry. angry. China needs markets to dump their goods. Well, uh, yeah, but the problem, of course, for China is uh, if there's a trade war in the U.S., uh, what is it, 500 billion of imports uh, into the United States? If Chinese goods are 20% more expensive, there are going to be fewer sales in the United States of Chinese goods. Um, China, on the other hand, may just turn around and just charge a 20% tariff against U.S. goods and or stop buying U.S. altogether. And that is going to hurt the U.S. economy. The U.S. stock market will take a dump. And now we've got a problem here in North America. MG Toe, Trump is upset because there is no Trump Tower in China. <laughs> uh, Trump is getting ready to build a Trump Tower in North Korea where he <laughs> wants an office. I don't know about that. Mary, hi all. 70 degrees in New Hampshire. Beautiful day. Hi, Mary. Welcome to the show. Debbie Manuel. Hi, Mary. Uh, Tom Henry. I missed the poem. Is It's on Facebook with the shower thread. Yes, it is. Uh, Tom, it's in the, uh, the the poem is right by the uh, video uh, I posted it yesterday. MG2, I'm waiting for the uh, $29.99 seven day cruise with mandatory $49.99 daily mandatory gratuities. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's another thing you never know. Uh, SQ Park, only drug cartel buys top dollar cars and trucks. There you go. Wendy Thompson, our minivan plant closed in 08 it's, and is now building vans in Canada. And Wendy, the number of vans being built today. Versus 08, the numbers are down again. And look at what uh, Ford did. They walked away from the minivan market. They walked away. They don't make them anymore. Uh, GM, fraction if they make anything. The only vans being made nowadays are cargo vans because, you know, business. But passenger vans, that business has been decimated, just decimated. It's unbelievable. Cruising with wheels. Hi, from Rochester, New York. 75 degrees and beautiful here. How are you guys doing? Welcome back from the bliss been watching you guys we've all been talking about you it's great to have you here i'm telling you two guys i want to have you on this show i want to do an interview with you guys over the phone at least and have you talk to my peeps over the air i think it would be so much fun i did that with uh, lalito loca just a couple weeks ago we had a blast with those guys love to have you on and we have to collaborate and do something together we got to do something where i'm on your channel and you come on my channel I think we could have some fun. Uh, I would really like to do that. Uh, Mary, I work in the automotive industry, and the orders for parts is just crazy. We ship a lot of our parts out of the country. I'm just waiting for it to catch up with us. Uh, that's you got to wonder, where, Mary. You have to wonder, <coughs> excuse me, if every part you make is 20 to 30% more expensive for the end user, that's going to be tough, really tough. But, you know, Mary, it, it's a classic example. You're in the kind of business that Trump is just not paying attention to. Uh, you're exporting a lot of your goods, which creates, of course, jobs for you and all of your fellow workers, obviously, and all of the companies that work with your company to help make these parts. Incredible numbers of jobs. If the tariffs were lower, you'd sell more parts to more buyers. It only makes sense. We as consumers love a deal. Well, right now, trade wars are not a deal. They are taxes in disguise. It's not good. Silo Steve, no cruise talk? See ya. Sorry, Silo. We're talking cruise talk, but through uh, the news here uh, with the stock prices going so bad. Boy, boy. Yes, Bruce, my man. He's back. Cruising with wheels. Silo, you you are salty today. Laugh out loud. Scott uh, Brody. Hi, Bruce. And all beautiful sunny day here in St. Thomas, Canada. 18 days until the solstice. Alaskan cruise. Getting very excited. Fantastic. Wendy Thompson, we were... Chrysler minivan, uh, uh, we had a Chrysler minivan. The Ram was next door. We had 8,000. 
in both plants, the ram is, is in now in Mexico. The jobs are gone. That's true. But if they weren't, if the if the the ram was steep, but still being built in the U.S., it might be five thousand more than it is today. Maybe ten thousand more because of the cheap labor in Mexico. This is how these crews, these car companies, can offer such incredible incentives on vehicles. MG Toe, the gold standard needs to come back. <laughs> yeah, the old days. I don't know that'll work. Oh my goodness, Silo Steve, always salty. <laughs> He's saying <laughs> cruising with wheels. Steamy Bean, the price of oil will keep cruise prices up, but the cruise lines will try to cut corners, and that could be through things like food. Cruise lines will go heavy on the carbs, uh, perhaps, steamer. But remember what they did back in uh, back in 08? Cruise lines had a $10 a day surcharge, a fuel surcharge. Do you remember those days, folks? Uh, we had surcharges on FedEx packages. We had fuel surcharges on airplane tickets. We had fuel charges on all kinds of nonsense uh, for a while that could come back if oil went too high steamy bean the price of oil will keep it up okay let's go move on so richard c boy am i glad i'm retired i have enough savings not to worry the recession starts here in the u.s way to go richard c robert brandt uh bruce stock workers are almost all unionized there you go there there you go and jordan hey uh, uh uh cruising with wheels amazing live stream on facebook ice cube park i remember in the 70s canadian dollar was worth five cents more than in the u.s dollar there was a time uh, but uh, that's long gone. Cruising with Wheels uh, and Jordan. Ah, oh, thanks. Glad, good to see you today. Vicky, uh, going uh, golf. Catch you tomorrow. Thanks. Good night. See you, Vicky. Have a good one. And Jordan, amazing. Love your work. Uh, Dylan LaRue, don't be surprised when prices go up and the main goal is to cut costs at the bottom of the labor market is the first to go. And we all start seeing the implication of the automated systems. Well, uh, that's true. Automated is, that's not going to stop. Automation is coming no matter what the price is. It's absolutely coming. Dylan Roos, self-checkout at every store and fast food, machines only for semi lines, online only markets, self-driving semi trucks. Yeah, uh, more and more of this is coming. Um, businesses need to be more efficient. They have to compete with each other. Uh, that's what they're doing. Steamy Bean, 29 degrees here in Sandy Bay, Saskatchewan. Cruising with wheels, Dylan LaRue. Hi, Dylan. Susie uh, Junko is here uh, saying hello. Steamy Bean, have the Chinese taken to cruising? Uh, 83 million potential customers out of one point some odd billion are waiting to go on a cruise. And uh, cruise lines want to satisfy that market. Trade wars uh, could uh, upset the Apple cart or could upset access to those 83 million for years. We don't know. Uh, there's all kinds of issues here. Uh, Steamer saying hi, Frank and Kevin. Um, uh, Dylan saying hi. Cruising with Will saying hi. MG Toe, I think it's a good idea that all travel agents be licensed in China. If a travel agency robs people, their lives are used for transplant material. <laughs> Talk about salty. Uh, MG Toe, here in the U.S., uh, uh, there have been several schools robbed by fake travel agents. Uh, I hear you. I agree. I think travel agencies should be licensed. And I think the way that they are licensed, I know in Canada, that's quite strict. Uh, I'm certain in certain U.S. states, it's very strict. The issue in China is not uh, uh, as far as being strict. In China, there are licensed travel agents that are able to sell railway tickets, plane tickets for domestic travel, uh, domestic uh, tourist ideas. But for cruising, that's a closed market. Uh, travel agencies in China, are uh, there's a restricted number that can only sell cruising, and uh, they are government uh, party-connected, uh, communist party-affiliated. And uh, they can be controlled at the snap of a finger. Uh, to cut off passengers from cruise ships, cruise ships to passengers, and that's an issue. Uh, it also uh, totally locks in the price of a cruise. There is no vacations to go.com shopping in China. Uh, the price is set by the licensed travel agents for cruising. No discussion. You either pay this much or get out. And uh, if you're allowed on the ship, you're allowed on the ship. When you want to book a cruise, show me your passport. I'll scan the passport to find out if you can go on a cruise because the government decides who gets to go, who doesn't get to go. And this is the price, pay or get out. It's a, a different animal entirely from the from the US. Peter Heckema, your hot dog at Costco just went up 36% if you pay Canadian dollars. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, the hot dog's going up. Oh. Don's family has reported on uh, scammed uh, scammed traveling agents as well. That's right. Uh, the, <laughs> oh, we got one here. We got a we got us a troll. Let's get rid of the troll. Here we go. Uh, let's see here. And Jordan Bruce, I think we got one. Yeah, we just got rid of him. Uh, let's see here. Who else is here? Who else is here? Who else is here? Yep, attack and destroy. Steaming Bean says, "Wendy Thompson, troll, go back under your bridge and close the door." Steaming Bean, uh, get out of your mother's flat and get a job, buddy. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, here we got another one. We got another one. Patty Bear. Goodbye, Patty Bear. Oh, the trolls come around every once in a while, don't they, folks? Such fun. Um, let's see. Uh, let's go here. Jim Thomas got my reports in. Steamy Bean. Hey, Cruising with Wheels. This is, is this Kevin or Frank? Tom Henry. Hello, Cruising with Wheels. Uh, Robert Brandt. Love Jenny and Tony at Lolita Loca. Uh, Cruising with Wheels. Uh, traveling with Bruce sounds good. We will have to set something up. Absolutely, you guys. We got to get something together. Uh, I think we could have some fun. Uh, and uh, it won't hurt our channels one bit. <laughs> Absolutely. And Jordan, yes, uh, please do. Uh, cruising with Wills, we do look forward to it. See me being Bruce, what are you drinking? Uh, it's my caffeine free in my, in my mug there. Uh, cruising with Wills, so the Steamy Bean is is, uh, is uh, Kevin today. Uh, uh, Frank is filming a Tales from the High Seas episode, Laugh Out Loud. Tom Henry, what's going on in New Orleans? Get the uh, NCIS uh, NOLA guys after the culprits. I'm not sure what you mean, Tom. Uh, Tom Henry, Kevin, I'm excited to hear what the concierge uh, did for you guys. Uh, Tom Henry, Bruce, did, did the mail arrive yet? No, I uh, didn't arrive as a Friday, but I have to check today. So I'm still waiting, my friend. Steamy Bean, love it when Frank uses the special effects with his voice gets dramatic. Cruising with Wills, Tom Henry, um, uh, Frank is filming that episode today so I can start editing it. <laughs> Camille is here. Remember the uh, the uh, Bugfest uh, scene in uh, Vegas Vacation? Vegas Vacation? Oh uh, my, the steamy bean. What is Frank talking about today on Tales from the High Sea? Sneak preview. Dylan Rue, oh my God, I cannot wait to hear your story from the Bliss. YouTube is why I took my first cruise. Camille, uh, remember the buffet scene in the movie Vegas Vacation? Could cruise ships cut costs that way? <laughs> uh, oh no, Tom Henry Bean, the Bliss uh, Haven concierge is something to get Frank steaming. Uh, Debbie Emmanuel, Kevin, I am very much looking forward to Frank's Tales from High Seas as well. Uh, uh, Steamy Bean, so I heard. Steamy Bean, this guy is messing with Frank. Could be a dingling. Uh, Susie Junko, Florida is always H uh, hot, I guess. Steamy Bean, Kevin, we don't need dinglings, do we? Uh, steaming, uh, cruising with wheels. Uh, the Steamy Bean, no, we don't. Needless to say, five page letter was sent to Andy Stewart. All right, uh, let's see here. We have some more folks who got kicked off. Randy coming in late today, not feeling well. Thank God for Nurse Michelle. Randy, hang in there, buddy. It couldn't have been what happened in that room. Uh, nothing was going on there. I feel fine. Uh, you should be okay, too. Rest and get better, please. And welcome, Michelle, uh, Nurse Michelle. Welcome to the show. Uh, Jim Thomas, sorry you're not feeling well, Randy. Uh, D&G Explorers arriving late, but hello, Bruce and Gang. Another YouTube channel is here. D&G, how are you guys doing? We've got to get together. i got to get you on this show as well, and we've got to do something. Uh, everyone is uh, wishing Randy a uh, uh, speedy recovery uh, from his issue. I hope it's nothing too serious. Hope you didn't get it in Mexico from what you were doing down there. Uh, please arrest and recover. Absolutely. Well, there you are, folks. Uh, quite a day today on the stock markets. Uh, the Dow was down 300 odd points. We'll have to see how the market reacts over the next few days. But uh, these uh, these issues regarding uh, the dollar, the trade war, uh, higher oil prices, perhaps inflation coming on a bit could be an issue for cruisers. Now, for those of us who are consumers, there might be deals. There may well could be deals, but uh, may not be you know, this, this week, but we'll have to keep an eye open for it and uh, cross our fingers, see how it all works out. Um, Ann Jordan, hope you're feeling better, Randy. D&G, hi, Ann. Um, but uh, today was a pretty bad stock, down 5.5% for Royal Caribbean, down 6.1% for uh, Norwegian, and down 7.85% for Carnival shares, um, not good. Steamy Bean, Bruce, when I watch you, I feel I'm, take, I'm taking in a webinar on marketing or business. Excellent work. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. It's what I used to do. Uh, I used to be a stockbroker and financial analyst type guy and uh, kind of kept on top of that stuff, uh, uh, although I enjoy talking about cruising a bit more, <laughs> as you probably know. But yeah, the, uh, the world is a complicated place. It's all connected. And, uh, you know... Um, if one politician doesn't get along with another politician, that's another. That's one matter. But if, we're talking about country to country relationships, and uh, Canadians love Americans, Americans love Brits, Brits love the the Germans, the Germans love the Italians. We, we we the people, we love our other different countries and cultures. We love it. Um, what is one of the most exciting things we can do? Go on a trip, and where is the trip going? to another country. It's what we want to do. We want to go see Canada, the United States. We want to see Mexico. We want to see the Caribbean. We want to see Europe. We want to see South America. We want to see Asia. Of course we do. We the people, that's what we want. But our politicians, they're trying to get votes. They're trying to win pop poll 
result uh, deals. That's what popularity contests is what they're all about. Unfortunately, they're using our money to do that. And that's the problem I have with these guys. They're, they're tinkering with my money to try to gain political points against somebody else and get reelected. I, 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 I have no use for these kinds of people. I'd rather they get voted out, but that's just me and my opinion. What am I gonna do? Uh, let's see, Stephen Bean, looking forward to tomorrow's trivia. Camille, uh, Bruce, you look a little lost. Look, looks like you lost a little weight. Getting uh, getting ready to eat on your next cruise, uh, unless the white shirt instead of green makes you look slimmer. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, I've done nothing. Um, uh, I, I still eat the ice cream. Uh, <laughs> but thank you, Camille, if you think I look thinner, God bless you. Uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, Jeanette, um, uh, do you or anyone have Carnival stock? Uh, a couple of our investors, of our, our watchers do. I personally don't, but some of them do. And Jordan, uh, Bean, yes. So uh, uh, so am I uh, trivia ago. Uh, and Jordan saying uh, she's looking forward to trivia tomorrow. MG Toe, if I go to the Caribbean now, I wouldn't get off the ship. I, I, I want to enjoy myself, not see a bunch of poverty. Well, it depends on, you know, obviously where in the Caribbean you're going, but yes. Uh, there's the third world down there. Uh, there's Haiti. There's Jamaica. Uh, there's uh, places down there you don't want to get off the ship. Uh, you just do, and you stay on board the uh, cruise liner for sure. Uh, and this is why uh, we are seeing the latest trend in cruising islands, private islands. The islands are being built. Uh, Coco Cay uh, being uh, in enhanced with a $200 million uh, improvement. Disney is shopping for another location to build a secondary, a second island. Um, Cruise lines want to keep us safe. Uh, they want us to be comfortable, calm, relaxed, and not have to worry about a thing in the real world. And so they're trying to build the artificial world for us. The first one is on board the ship. And now the second one is at these private islands, these private getaways. And uh, it works. It works like a charm. And for a family of four, mom and dad and two kids, a 10 and an 11-year-old or a 9 and an 11-year-old, wow. Take them to Coco K okay, with all the water rides coming up, all the water slides and the, the wave pools and everything. Else. Oh, man, you got it made. That's a whole day not to worry about a darn thing. That's why the Mariner of Seas launched today for its first cruise. It's now doing these three- and four-day cruises out of Miami after being fully refurbished. Where is it going? Nassau, Coco K. Okay. Guess what? Coco K, okay. it's all on board, and it's all Royal Caribbean spending, all Royal Caribbean security. Nice. That's what they're doing. What you have to do. Uh, uh, let's see. Steamy Bean. Guys, give your thumbs up as 50. We are watching. 50 watching today? That's fantastic. Robert Brandt, the money the ships bring to, to poor ports help sustain them. I agree, Robert. Uh, cruise ships going to third world countries is good business. Uh, but uh, you have to have security for your staff, for your, for your uh, crew, uh, crew, your passengers. You have to have security for your passengers as as well and so it's a trade-off um you know and uh, every once in a while we hear a terrible story uh maybe uh, you know uh, uh passengers are, are being uh, being uh, robbed or there's uh, passengers of uh, uh you know being in 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 a tour bus that's it's a shoddy condition i mean cruise lines are really trying to be careful with their passengers and that's why these private islands are the future marty mcfly the future are these private islands uh, that's that's what they're doing i believe it um uh yeah uh, let's see mg toe is saying robert not when you're harassed and robbed there you have it and jordan thumbs up mg toe well enjoy yourself and look at uh poverty uh camille uh on one a caribbean island a cop uh from that island is not what's that good actually my husband i found it dangerous to go further down the street than we were short. okay so they were on one caribbean island uh and and uh, she told her husband that it was too dangerous to go further down the street that they were exploring and i really just don't want to go off the beaten path i agree with that uh, one of the islands you can visit where you can just enjoy yourself cayman islands the standard of living on the cayman islands is higher than the u.s <laughs> it's like uh, oh it's as good as switzerland i'd say it's the switzerland of the caribbean the cayman islands uh for those of you who've been there you probably know uh, they do rather well down there. Uh, a lot of cruise ships pull into port every day. Um, uh, if you go to San Juan, Puerto Rico, uh, you should be all right. U.S. territory, St. Thomas, you should be fine. St. Martin, you should be fine. But uh, uh, some of the uh, places like Jamaica, you, you're not going to get off the ship in Jamaica and just wander the streets. 
That is not happening. Uh, Jamaica has been in a state of national emergency for five years solid. Uh, they have a nighttime curfew in Jamaica. Uh, you do not want to be walking the streets of Jamaica. Um, and so you'll take, if you get off your boat in Jamaica, you're on a, on a uh, organized tour. I wouldn't do it. I'd stay on the ship and just enjoy the amenities of the ship myself. Um, in, in other words, when I look for a cruise, uh, I look at the itinerary and if it's got Jamaica on it, it it's not in my top five uh, to-do list. It, it, Jamaica just doesn't make it to the, to the, you know, where I really am dying to go. It's not going to cut it. Um, Steamy Bean, 32 thumbs, uh, 32 thumbs up. He's saying, is that right? Hang on. Where am I here? Uh, can we get to 40? I don't know. Robert Brandt, no one worries about Jamaica, and that's the least secured in the Caribbean. Robert Brandt, I agree, Bruce. MG Toe, fake alcohol, non-standard, clean food, etc. See, MG knows. See, uh, Randy Lucas, I've now visited three different ports in Jamaica. Each time was a good experience. I will not be ashore again. Uh, each time was not a good experience. I will be not ashore again. There you go, my friend. Uh, First-hand experience. You know, Steamy Bean, Jamaica was hor has horrible human rights. Wendy Thompson, some ports equal. Stay on the ship. That's right. Camille. Uh, on one port, Cosmo and I were surrounded by about seven 13-year-olds. Not fun. Yeah, not not fun at all. Uh, I agree. And Jordan, never been to Jamaica. Uh, don't bother. And don't, don't, don't bother. That's <laughs> so much, so much better to see elsewhere. Robert Brent, as someone in the Caribbean, um, the daytime usually okay, and the ships sail before the, all the bad dudes or the, all the bad deeds tend to happen. That's right. Uh, usually the ships are gone by 4. Uh, in the wintertime, you know, sunsets at 4.30. Five o'clock, three thirty, four o'clock. Ships are ready to go. But again, uh, uh, I don't recommend uh, exploring Jamaica on your own. Uh, no, don't be doing that. Um, uh, DG Explorers. I noticed cruises are going to Falmouth in Jamaica. I'm going in nineteen. Is that port any better? Falmouth is a, a, a private setting, I believe. Um, uh, uh, DNG. If you go to Falmouth, um, you're going to be uh, you're going to be in uh, organized um, uh, tours, or you're going to go into specific secured areas. You're not going to walk the streets. I was in Oco Rios and Oco Rios, Jamaica. Same thing. We got off the got off the ship. I walked down the pier, down the dock there, and uh, they had a an enclosed shopping area that was caged off from the rest of the world. I I didn't even bother going that far. I, I went to a bar. Uh, my wife grabbed a beer. She loves the red stripe from Jamaica. Small stubby bottles of beer. I grabbed the Diet Coke, and we got the internet uh, code. Uh, the the so we could do emails and Wi-Fi. And uh, we stayed for about an hour and a half, just relaxed, then walked back onto the ship. Didn't miss a thing. Loved every minute of it. It was just fine. Price was right, too. I think we spent five bucks. It was just fine. Um, let's see here. Uh, there we go. Camille, uh, so what islands are more orosporous than the <laughs> More prosperous than the U.S.? Are you saying so? What islands are more prosperous than the U.S.? Is what you're asking me. Well, the Cayman Islands. Uh, the standard of living is is pretty good. Uh, do they have Costco's and Walmart's and Target's? No. <laughs> but the standard of living for an average family on the Cayman Islands uh, puts the U.S. to shame. The U.S. dollar is worth eighty cents in the Cayman Islands for the Cayman currency. A CI dollar is a dollar twenty. Uh, so it's much more expensive for an American to live in the Cayman Islands than the U.S. Of course, that's how the Cayman Islands makes its differential uh, on its currency. Um, there are no taxes, no income taxes in the Caymans, but they do have import fees for everything. But uh, if you're a family in, in the Cayman Islands and you're a national, uh, you're free, in other words, you're, you have status, Cayman status, that's the lottery. That's the North American lottery. You do it better than Canada. You do it better than the Americans by far. <clears throat> you can travel the world affordably and uh, you can really enjoy it. You'll have a job for life. You have free health care, free education. No income tax. Uh, you can, Americans love having you come in because you spend money. <laughs> That's definitely one of them. Um, uh, but I used to live there, so I know. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm just uh, trying to catch up with my uh, my uh, my uh, comments. Here we go. Tracy, uh, I always used to love going to Jamaica years ago, she was saying. Um, used to walk everywhere. I used to walk everywhere. But if I go anymore on a cruise, we stay right in the secured port of Falmouth. Yeah, it's it's sad, isn't it, Tracy? It's really gone downhill. Robert, uh, if you want to see Jamaica, stay at a resort and don't leave the compound. That's right. They have beautiful resorts, but avoid the land in a small town. Just, yeah, it's just no point. Uh, Caymans make the money on banking fees, Robert says. That's right. The Cayman Islands, uh, just so you know, um, in their national uh, bank, their, their vaults, uh, for every dollar that they've ever printed of Cayman currency, for all the Cayman currency out there, 
they actually have the American dollars to back it up in the in the vault. <laughs> yeah, the the country is is a surplus type place. Uh, yeah, it's um, very well off. Quite quite interesting. But it's it's Caribbean. It's a unique place. Uh, it's a neat place to visit. It's it's interesting for a cruise ship. Fascinating if you can spend a week or two there uh, as a as a in a resort. Fascinating. And if you ever have a friend down there, where you can spend like a month. You'll see a world you can't believe exists. Can't believe it. It's just some, something else. Randy, uh, D&G, uh, it is a, a private shopping area, the Falmouth. Uh, however, if you want to leave and go through the guarded gate, you'll be greeted by many, many unhelpful folks who want to separate you from your money. Do not go out there. Robert, a few islands here have that approach, low taxes and fees on certain things. Steaming Bean, Bruce, you have 37 Fonzies. Uh, give out three T-shirts to hit 40. <laughs> Paul Wilson, uh, what did I miss? Uh, what's so bad with Jamaica? I was there last November. I enjoyed it. Oh, man, Paul. Good for you. Uh, good for you. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, you, you couldn't have been at downtown Kingston, could you? You couldn't have been. Uh, I, I don't think so. Uh, Paul, you're going to have to catch the rerun because the show is almost over. Uh, we're talking about all kinds of stuff today and uh, catching up with people. Having a lot of fun. I want to say thank you, everybody, by the way, uh, for visiting my uh, Amazon affiliate link. Down below here, I have an affiliate link uh, into Amazon. If you shop through that, you, you click on that, you go right to the homepage of Amazon. You buy anything in 24 hours, I get a commission for that. Thank you, everyone who's been taking advantage of that. I really appreciate it. it helps the old channel keep going. We are monetized. By the way, if you didn't know, last Wednesday, 10 o'clock at night, the channel got remonetized. I've been making about six, seven dollars a day in advertising revenue since we've been remonetized. Can't live on it, but it doesn't hurt. And uh, finally, um, I'm being paid by YouTube for something, uh, which is a nice uh, turnaround. Thank you also for those of you going here to the Redbubble store and picking up some Traveling with Bruce merchandise. The uh, coffee mugs here, folks are picking up. Uh, travel mugs and uh, picking up tote bags and stickers and wall clocks. Thank you very much for that. I really do appreciate it. And of course, all of you who have been sending donations to my uh, PayPal account, uh, which is on the homepage up here, I can't thank you enough. Uh, it keeps me alive. Uh, this is my full-time job, and today was a full-time day. I'll tell you that. I have still got work to do, getting ready for tomorrow's show. Thank you for any of those donations. I really appreciate it. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh dng explorers is saying thanks randy for the info on falmouth robert brand jamaica has a, a whole lot that's fine at the resorts but avoid wandering off steaming bill coon show a cool show bruce enjoyed the uh the business chatter steamer scene jeanette uh is uh, dun river falls okay to do um I, I would think as a with an organized group it should be all right randy lucas we were there in april not getting off the ship again though he said he not not doing it so he's not happy uh, Robert Brandt, all the Sandals resorts are great. Uh, Peter Heckema, very interesting show today. Enjoyed it immensely. See you later. Tom Henry, anyone need some good distilled water from my new uh, dehumidifiers? Got buckets. Way to go, Tom. <laughs> Fantastic. He bought those through Amazon. I love you, Tom. That's great. Steamy Bean, six bucks gets you a delish hot dog and awful caffeine and awful caffeine free diet coke. <laughs> Uh, Richard C. Great show today, Bruce. Thanks. And Jordan, just got to be careful. D&G. Thanks, Randy. Jim Thomas, have a great day, everyone. See you all tomorrow. Debbie Manuel, great show, everyone. Check in twice tomorrow. Stay safe, everyone. Toodles. Thanks, you guys, for watching. Thanks for the thumbs ups today. Uh, how many did we get today? I've got 36 thumbs ups. Four trolls gave me thumbs downs today. What are you going to do? We'll take the 36 thumbs ups. And if any of you can spare one on the way out the door, Please hit me with a thumbs up. If you're thinking of subscribing, there's a subscribe button here. There's a subscribe button there. This one has a little bell icon beside it. If you hit that, you get notified every time I make a new video and when I go live. Hit the bell notification icon. You'll be updated every time. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your commentary. Thank you for subscribing. And thank you for supporting the channel. I love it. I'm on tomorrow twice, 5 o'clock and 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Trivia at eight prime prime tv if you haven't tried it you don't know what you're missing you haven't got a clue the secret answers the secret words tokyo and bakersfield those are the secret words to trivia questions you gotta know that come on by and say hi at eight o'clock as well as five o'clock tomorrow night 
Uh, Steaming Bean, I'm reading 38. Hey, that's great. 38 thumbs ups. Robert Brandt, always a great show. Paul Wilson, like to hear about Alaska. And Jordan, great show, Bruce. Today, ditto. Check in twice tomorrow. See you, Debbie. Michelle Lucas, no Jamaica Falls. I will, I will get sick. She won't go. There you go. Saying, don't do it. Don't go to those Jamaica Falls. Very interesting. I am showing 37 thumbs ups. That's all I'm showing on my channel. I don't know what you're seeing there, Bean or maybe you got a Maybe you got a faster link than even I have. I don't know. Uh, thanks again, everybody. Um, take care, folks. Hugs uh, and Jordan, stay safe. I'll talk to you tomorrow. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me today, Monday, June the 25th, 2018. I enjoyed the show. I hope you enjoyed the show. We'll talk tomorrow about cruising. We'll see what's new and what's going on, and uh, we'll have some more fun, and we'll do tribute tomorrow night at 8. In the meantime, take care, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.